Welcome everybody to the Generative AI for Beginners course. My name is Somalia Zadigo and I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. So today I just want to showcase lesson 10, building low-code AI applications uh, using Generative AI, which you probably didn't think it was possible. So this is also part of the Generative AI for Beginners course. And for this lesson, we're going to be covering a few things. So we're going to cover how you can use generative AI in Power Platform. And then we're going to switch over to look at the AI capabilities with AI Builder and generative AI. So it's not going to be just only purely based on generative AI. We're going to look at some models uh, that come with AI Builder and also Gen AI within the Power Platform. So the generative AI in the Power Platform is actually about enhancing low-code development and application with generative AI, which is a key focus area for the Power Platform. The goal is to enable everyone to build AI-enabled and powered apps, sites, dashboards, and automate processes with AI without requiring any data science expertise, whereas in the past, you needed to have a technical background or become a data scientist to actually work with AI. And like I mentioned, we can empower every person with AI because AI is no longer a niche capabilities for pro developers and data scientists, which we can provide through Azure. AI is an imperative and expected offering in our day-to-day -day productivity. So you can think about PowerPoint Designer, for an example, in which in this case, when you are working on those slide presentations, you may have some suggestions for how your design would look like for a specific uh, slide on your deck. And also, you can also have Teams transcriptions. So you record a Teams meeting, and then you can be able to pull a transcript from that specific Teams meeting and hear what other people were saying if you couldn't make it out on the audio. And of course, the new co-pilot capabilities in Microsoft 365. But before, we actually had like technical workers that worked with AI through pro code development around using Microsoft Azure and some of the cognitive, cognitive services within Microsoft Azure. But now, the making experience in the Power Platform as part of the Microsoft Cloud offering takes the same principle of bringing AI capabilities to aid every makers in our platform. Being able to build solutions that are AI powered and also AI enabled so that they can be able to build those solutions. Either you are sitting in an HR department or a marketing department, you can use low code, no code tools such as the Power Platform so that you can be able to ship your solutions to your everyday end users that are, in a sense, using Microsoft Teams, Microsoft 365, and also SharePoint. But Low-code, no-code tools like the Power Platform are not necessarily familiar with a lot of people. And you might be asking yourself, what is the Microsoft Power Platform? Well, this is where no-code, low-code, and code first is welcome. So this is where you can be able to build solutions without needing to have any knowledge of how to write a program or how to write code. But again, even if you know how to do that, you can be able to build to bring those experiences into the Power Platform and build solutions that are already enhanced with some of the skills that you already have and also the new capabilities that you can have. The Power Platform is actually made up of five products where you have Power Apps for mobile development, mobile app development, Power Automate for process automation, Power BI for business analytics, Copilot Studio, which is my personal favorite, where you can build, you can build your own Copilot. Power Pages, lastly, where you can build externally facing websites. And all of these have a generative AI capability enabled for them. And this is Copilot, where you have the Power Platform Copilot that enables you to build even faster solutions using each or every single one of these products within the Microsoft Power Platform. But how does this actually fit into the Microsoft Cloud? In the past, because of the fully integrated Microsoft Cloud and our investment in Azure or in Apple, 
OpenAI, we're able to apply generative AI, which is large language models, into the fabric of each and every single one of our products. So you can think about, for an example, Microsoft 365. Now we have a Microsoft 365 Copilot that enables and enhances productivity. There's also Copilot in developer tools in the form of GitHub Copilot, and you will have either your IDE or you're using your code editor like Visual Studio Code to actually write code even much more faster using GitHub Copilot. Even the Power Platform has its own Copilot that I, like I actually mentioned earlier on. So Copilot is about making AI a companion to help you do your job better and faster. You can think of the era of Copilots rather as having AI as a real-time collaborator that generates content, sparks creativity, and completes work. But then how do you then take advantage or positive advantage of generative AI within the Power Platform? How do you use Copilot to enhance your productivity when building solutions? Let's take this example for, for, for a moment to actually look at how you can be able to build an automation much more quicker than you would have in the past. So we just describe our automation and say, on a daily basis, we want to collect all the performed inspections from Power Apps. And we have a condition here that says, all those that have passed compose an email summary and attach an invoice from SAP. In the past, we would need it to add the steps manually, but with the help of generative AI in the form of Copilot in Power Automate, we have a Power Automate flow already built as a draft. Then we can be able to see some of the actions that are already added. So we retrieve an invoice from SAP, add generative AI capability by generating an email body, which we'll get to later. And also, we need to make sure that we enforce responsible AI where we review that email message that was generated by AI. Then after we approved that, we send an email to that specific party. But then in a sense where you actually want to update this draft using generative AI instead of using the manual process as we would have done in the past, we can still use or take positive advantage of the chat enabled co-pilot within the designer or the design studio within Power Automate. So let's say we have another condition now into our Power Automate flow that we actually want to cater to. So we look at if the car has been inspected, we want the bot to check if the car has been inspected and is off brand. Then after that, it needs to send an alert to a team's channel after that specific inspection has failed. So what then generative AI does, it actually adds those actions in that very specific place so that you can be able to put in all of those details that you actually need. And then you can even see, even with this capability, you can also add in some of the other conditions where it checks for if the inspection has failed. And if it has, it posts that specific Teams message onto that specific Teams meet the Teams channel that you are specifying within your Power Automate flow. But then again, the, is that it? Is it really that much that you can be able to use generative AI like that within the Power Platform? No. Let's actually look at how you can use other AI capabilities within the Power Platform by looking at the AI models and Gen AI with AI Builder. Firstly, let's look at AI Builder. It actually enables you to infuse AI to turn data into actions without writing any code. So you have a few different capabilities in this case where you can look at documents where you can process some of those documents. Either you want to process a form, receipt processing, or you want to do some language detection, text translation, and also category classification and so forth. You can also take it a step further and work with images where you want to detect some objects within a specific image. So you can use the object detection model within AI Builder, or you can use the text recognition OCR. Then it doesn't end there with AI Builder. You can also make decisions by using the prediction model that AI Builder is actually enabling you to use. It doesn't end there. But the biggest question is, OK, this course is about generative AI, and we're just only talking about AI models that have already been there even before generative AI came into play. And this is where we actually look at how AI Builder and Dataverse ground, secure, and integrate business data with AI. Through this, 
Dataverse has your knowledge. You have all of your information stored into a Dataverse table. And then you want to actually be able to access that and utilize that, that knowledge into some of your solutions using prompts. And that is done through AI Builder. And within AI Builder, we have something called the Prompt Builder that enables you to either use or create your own custom prompts that you can be able to put into some of the solutions that you have. So you will have a pre-built prompt library that has templates to leverage models and prompts without any training required. Then if you don't want to use a pre-built prompt, uh, prompt library, you can also use or create your own custom prompts by using the prompt engineering interface within either Power Apps or Power Automate. So you can build your GPT prompts that trigger instructions on GPT model hosted in Azure OpenAI service. In this case, you don't manage the models in the Azure OpenAI service. You just consume and build your own custom prompts using the prompt engineering interface. Then last but not least, you can also add your data into some of your prompts. So you can cater for your data in some of your prompts where you add dynamic inputs. For an example, data from autom an automated workflow and also enterprise data to ground your prompts. Let's look at some of the scenarios that are available with the prompt builder. You have summarization, which is the most famous one where you can have some text summarization, either from an email. You have text classification. You have content generation and email reply. You want to be able to reply to an email or have help from generative AI to help you reply to an email instead of having to sit there and think about how you can be able to draft. This email reply capability, for an example, can be able to help you to have a draft already working, and you can just edit, edit it, and then you can send it through to your customer. And then some of the other ones that are available are sentiment analysis. So you can have some prompts that check for sentiment within a specific text or within a specific input that you're getting either from your user or from your solution, and translation and call, code generation. But how does this really work? We're going to look at a high level workflow. At first, you have end users. They consume your content and provide possible input through some of the apps that you built. So it could be a Power App, which is an enterprise app, a Power Automate flow that's running in the background, taking the input from the user, or a Microsoft 365 Copilot, either be it it's coming from a Word document or it's coming in from an email. Then you have you as part of this Generative AI uh, for Beginners course, where you are a maker, where you create custom prompts optimized for a business scenario. And you can utilize some of those prompts within Power Apps, Power Automate, and Copilot Studio to enhance the solutions that you build. And all of these solutions that you're building that are being used by your end users are powered by AI Builder, where you have that prompt creation experience and some of the system guidelines, and even retrieval augmented generation, which is also called RAG. Again, makes you, it makes use of AI Builder and Dataverse. And all of this is powered by the GPT 3.5 Turbo hosted by the Azure OpenAI service. It's not managed by you. It's already built in onto AI Builder so that you can then be able to use it to build some of the solutions that you actually have that you're going to ship out to your users. You don't have to worry about managing the GPT 3.5 Turbo model on your own. You just need to worry about building a solution that makes the experience for your users better. Right. With all of this prompt uh, talk that we're talking about, we have to actually think about how to build an effective prompt. Because at the end of the day, whenever we are using generative AI, we need to be able to get the most basic or the most wanted solution or we want the most basic uh, response that we are getting from the generative AI model, for an example. So here comes in prompt engineering where you have to build an effective prompt to get the best response. So for an example, when you are building an effective prompt, you need to think about a few things. The task, which is an instruction telling the GPT model the task to be performed. Then consider the context as you provide within your prompt that describes the data that will be acted on along with any input variables. The, ne the next step into your prompt is the expectation. Convey to GPT the goals and expectations on the response. 
Then last but not least, the output. Help the generative AI model or help GPT format the output the way you want it so that you don't end up saying that this is not what you're looking for. How do you then be able to use this or take advantage of this within the Power Platform? Like I mentioned earlier on, you have the prompt library and GPT templates. So you can use pre-configured prompts to help you get started with common scenarios like responding to a customer complaint, classifying text, or extracting information from a text, or summarizing text that is coming either from an email or from an application that you actually built using Power Apps. If you want to use some of those pre-configured prompts, you can actually use the pre-configured templates to get you started so that you can be able to in integrate those prompts in an end-to-end -end workflow and also sometimes into an end-to-end -end solution that you can be able to use Power Apps to build and then enhance it using an end-to-end -end workflow. Now, the next step for you is to actually try it out yourself. So go through the lesson, complete the entire lesson 10 to actually build a low-code AI application, and you'll be able to build a Power App by describing you want to build an app to track and manage student assignments. And then there are some other extra steps so that you can be able to build a Power Automate flow by describing what you actually want from it. And also check out the other lessons within this specific Generative AI for Beginners course. We actually give you some of the knowledge on how you can be able to use Generative AI with different tools and different levels of expertise.